You are an all-seeing God. You know everything. See everything that's ever been or ever will be. And that power can be overwhelming, and you've been tasked to tell a story. But what do you say? There's so much to tell, so much to choose from. It can be paralyzing. That's the problem with third-person omniscient. There are so many directions you can take, and there are different considerations depending on what way you choose. So let's break down third-person omniscient into its individual parts and see how they act. First of all, third-person omniscient isn't truly omniscient. The narrator doesn't necessarily know everything. Like I talked about in my last video, third limited and third omniscient exist on a spectrum. The closer you get towards limited, the more restricted you are to a character's perspective, and the more towards omniscient, the less restricted you are. That framework is useful when writing in third person limited because our narrator is limited by what the character knows. But as we move towards omniscient, we have to set our own restrictions on the narrator. You might think that restricting yourself would hurt your ability to be creative, but in fact, restrictions can be incredibly helpful. They keep you consistent as you write, they simplify the decision-making process, and can inspire new ideas to respect the restrictions that you've set. So we should give ourselves a new restriction. In Limited, our restriction is, what does the character know? But in Omniscient, we can go beyond the character and ask the broader question, what does the narrator know? Answering that question will give you those lines you can't cross and serve as a grounding point. We can imagine it as a second axis to the character question, with the narrator knows everything at the very top, and the narrator knows nothing at the very bottom. Each quadrant of this graph behaves differently, and these are the different directions I mentioned earlier. A story low on character and narrator knowledge is going to feel different than one with low character knowledge and high narrator knowledge. And there are multiple ways to do stories in the same quadrant. That graph is great for exploring all the different directions you can take your story in, and there's so much to explore there, so let's dive in. The top right corner is the land of low character connection and high narrator knowledge. This is historically where most third-person omniscient stories find themselves. The narrator moves from character to character as they please and knows as much as you want them to know. This is where you'd find stories like Pride and Prejudice or the present tense parts of The Name of the Wind. Here, it's important to remember that just because you have low character knowledge and high narrator knowledge, that doesn't mean that you don't have a main character. All stories have a character or characters that they focus on. Readers need consistent characters to latch onto, like Elizabeth in Pride and Prejudice or Coat in The Name of the Wind. Approaching the story this way is fairly simple, since all you have to do is set your narrator's boundaries and follow them. Decide how much do they know about the world around them and how much do they know about the characters. These answers can be approximate, but if you are a hardcore planner, you can still write them out explicitly. Deciding how much the narrator knows can be especially crucial if your story has an element of mystery to it. If the narrator avoids sharing relevant information until it's necessary to move the plot forward, that can feel cheap. You don't want that informational inconsistency. But if you're writing an epic fantasy, a well-placed deus ex machina can be exciting and fun. So it's important to consider your genre when you're deciding where your story fits on the graph. And you can always make exceptions for fun. It's just a guideline. It's not like a hard and fast rule. You decide what your story needs, and sometimes you gotta break those rules. That's cool. Next, the bottom right corner is an interesting zone. Low character connection and low narrator knowledge means the story is basically told observationally. The narrator just tells what's happening in the scene and nothing more. Imagine all show, no tell. I don't actually know any books that explore this space, though I am sure that they exist. Where you do see this often, though, is in film. There usually isn't a narrator to tell you anything beyond what's happening on screen. You only get to hear the dialogue and see what's happening. Now, there are exceptions to this since some movies have VO. Discombobulate. Dazed. 
Militant Wild Haymaker. But in general, screenplays don't include any of the expository information we're used to seeing in novels. If you were going to write in this quadrant, you'd have to really focus on character interactions and dialogue. Since you can't just exposit anything about their personalities or background, you have to find a way to show it through what they say and do. I imagine most people wouldn't choose to write a full novel in this style, but it is a great writing exercise. Writing in this style will make you better at dialogue and description. So it's worth trying out so you don't have to lean on exposition as much in your actual projects. Plus, it could be an interesting way to tackle a short story. Now, where character connection is high and narrator knowledge is low is here in the bottom left quadrant, which is the golden zone for third person limited. But we've already talked about that in another video, so you can go check that out. But that leaves this last quadrant here in the top left. High character connection, high narrator knowledge, which based on everything we've talked about in this series, seems almost like a paradox. We've established that when you cross the threshold into limited, you are limited to what the character knows, other than stories where your character is literally omniscient. This is where stories that head hop live. There is a third person omniscient narrator, but they can hop into any character's mind and switch perspectives mid scene. In my video on third person limited, I talked about how this is generally confusing for readers and I stand by that, but that doesn't mean it's off limits. Especially since one of the most successful books of all time was written in this style, Dune. While Paul is the story's main character, we often slip to other characters' perspectives mid-conversation and hear their inner monologue, which Paul can't hear. When I read Dune, that was confusing at first. The book is kind of notorious for being a difficult read because of its complex world building and plot, but I think this style is the actual reason. Dune came out in 1965, when style expectations for genre fiction weren't as settled as they are now. I have no clue if a book published today with that style could hope to be anywhere near as popular, but it works for Dune. The cast is so large and so much happens that it would take a ton of extra time to show all that information that we get from those little dips into characters' minds. So Dune style takes some getting used to, but the story helps you out a little bit. Like we talked about perspective switches in Third Limited, Herbert will give you the character's name in the first sentence when the perspective switches and only switches between paragraphs. Since there aren't any other signs, it's still a bit confusing, but like I said, you get used to it. That being said, I'd probably avoid this style if you can, since it naturally makes your writing more difficult to read, but it's still worth talking about. Dune might have been more confusing without it, since we'd have to spend more time with those minor characters, which means more chapters, and things have to happen in those chapters, which means more plot, which might just convolute the story and end up making it more confusing. So be cautious of the style, but don't write it off entirely. This method, while confusing, could potentially make your story easier to read. Which sounds insane when I say it out loud, but lesser of two evils, I guess. So those are the four main styles of third person. But there are some corner cases where you can mix perspectives, like the aforementioned The Name of the Wind. While the present sections of the story are in third person omniscient, most of the story takes place in first person flashbacks told by Kavoth. You see this a lot in stories that have other stories nested inside of them, which are also known as frame stories. Obviously, your narrator in the sections told by a character is limited to what that character knows, which simplifies the thought process a bit. But when writing outside of the flashbacks in the parts with third person omniscient, your narrator has access to a lot more information. This structure also gives you the opportunity to play with the narrator-reader relationship by using an unreliable narrator. If a character is telling the story, they have the agency to withhold details, embellish them, make commentary, or even just forget something. Now, that doesn't mean you should withhold details whenever it's convenient for the plot. You still want to write a satisfying story. But in these situations, your guiding point becomes not only what does the narrator know, but also what is the narrator willing to say? The answer to that question should come from the character's personality and motives. But the starting point to writing a story in third person 
is looking at your story and thinking about what it needs. Your genre may have a big influence on this. YA tends to lean close to the protagonist, while a sprawling space opera tends toward more narrator knowledge. If your story is incredibly complex, God forbid, maybe you take the Dune route. If your story isn't necessarily complex, but you want to withhold the character's true thoughts and intentions, you might find yourself somewhere towards the right side of the graph. And once you decide where your thresholds are for narrator knowledge and character connection, you can write down your limits explicitly so you can stay consistent. Or you can just play it by ear. Either way, the next step is actually writing the dang thing. Go do it. Go write your book. Go write it. Go write your third person omniscient story. But avoid the Dune Root. It is very dangerous. It's a very dangerous place, that Dune Root. Wizards of Hatterack, give a duck a bone. And that's it for this video. If you liked it or found it helpful, consider sharing it with other writers. Like maybe through Discord or Reddit, or, or you tweet it at people, or in giant group messages that you're a part of, or Reddit. Also, like and subscribe. All that helps out the channel a ton. Leave a comment if you have any questions or if you just wanna tell me what your favorite story written in third person omniscient is, or if you just wanna say hi. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.